Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the service tonight. If you will, stand please. And let's sing number five in our hymn book. Number five. say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin I left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow Lord now indeed I find Thy power there alone can change the leper's bone and melt the heart of stone. Jesus paid it all, all to him I will. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For nothing good have I. Whereby thy grace to claim, I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land. Jesus paid it all, no to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And with me for the throne, I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Let's sing one more, number 15. 15. <clears throat> I must needs go home by the way of the cross There's no other way but this I shall never get sight of the gates of life if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as onward go. The way of the cross leads home. I must needs go on in the blood sprinkle way, the path that the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the height sublime, where the soul is at home with God, <clears throat> the way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as onward go. The way of the cross leads home. Then I bid farewell to the way of the world to walk in it nevermore. For my Lord says, Come and seek my home where he waits at the open door. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as onward go, the way of the cross leads home. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray together before we start tonight. Just look to the Lord, have a word of prayer together. Father, we are thankful that we can be here tonight. Thank you for your grace and your goodness. We just ask you, Lord, tonight now that you'll just uh, bless in the service. And Lord, may we just uh, be able, Lord, to worship you, to God just uh, take the uh, realization of the truth, God, of who you are and what you've done for us. And may that just, uh, Lord, have the preeminent place in our heart and life tonight. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would just 
minister and bless all the folks that are here, meet needs in their life and encourage them and strengthen us together through your word. And Lord, we pray for all the children's ministries, our teen ministries. Lord, you'll bless and Lord, use our folks, God, to faithfully, Lord, share your word and <clears throat> help these young lives, Lord, uh, to come to know you and to learn how to grow and to live for you. So we'll thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you can be seated. We appreciate you standing and singing with us as we get our service started tonight. And uh, we're just thankful for God's goodness to us. I think this amp has kicked out, Alex. Do you remember where that button's at? Why don't you go back there and try that for us? Uh, we we got to get that straightened out. Got to get it figured out. <clears throat> but it sure doesn't sound like it's working to me, does it, you? <clears throat> But uh, we are thankful for everybody being in our services tonight. God bless you. And a uh, good place to be on Wednesday evening in the Lord's house. And uh, we've just finished up there uh, the last part of the month of, uh, of September, moving now into the month of October. And uh, we had a tremendous mission revival. We really did. And uh, we're just thankful for how God worked in hearts and lives and worked in our church and uh, we're looking forward now as we move forward through the remaining part of this year and into next year, seeing our mission ministry grow. And we hope you'll keep praying about that and uh, just allow the Lord to use you. Uh, we're going to continue to, sp to speak and to preach and to uh, keep missions in our focus, reaching souls with the gospel uh, for the next uh, little while. But uh, certainly it's something we never want to get very far from uh, the purpose of our life, but we're thankful for how the Lord worked and how the Lord blessed there. <clears throat> thankful now as we move into the month of October, we've got a couple uh, big events that are going to be uh, things that will be exciting for us. We've got our uh, uh, homecoming meeting coming up here the weekend of, uh, of October 12th and 13th, and uh, then we'll have our Hallelujah Festival. It's one of our big outreaches for our community, uh, reaching families in our community. Uh, toward the end of the month as well. So these are a couple good things going on here uh, in the month of October. hope you'll take a look at the bulletin. And uh, we've got on the inside cover uh, folks and things that we're praying for, ministries. Uh, the OU Southern Campus Bible Clubs will be starting now soon. And uh, we're looking forward to a good year there. And don't forget, anytime you want to come out and visit, reach into the neighborhoods and uh, community here uh, on Saturday mornings. We meet at 10 o'clock, go out visiting, and uh, we can help you and uh, get someone for you to go with on uh, Saturday mornings to visit. Uh, don't forget Sunday school now. Sunday school's back into a normal type of schedule. It starts at 9.30. We got our two adult classes. This class here studying uh, the uh, book of 1 Peter, The Family of Like Precious Faith is the title of that series of studies. And then uh, in the ministry center, we're studying the life of Joseph, and it's a, a tremendous study. And uh, we hope that you'll choose one of those and put your life and influence under the sound of God's word in Sunday school. Use Sunday school as a, not only a way to uh, equip yourself to serve the Lord and live for him, but also a way to evangelize lost people by inviting them to come. And uh, God's word will do a work in their heart, in their life. Uh, we hope that you'll uh, be sure to, uh, to be in Sunday school. Over on the other side, we've got uh, a list of names of folks that we're praying for and things that we have on our prayer list. And uh, I hope you'll be praying for uh, our uh, Friday evening bonfire. We've got the football uh, game this weekend there, Friday night. We're going to have a bonfire after the, uh, the game. And we had over 50 young people in attendance the last time that we had that. And uh, Brother Greg Wagner preached, did a good job giving the gospel to all those children, young people, teenagers, and we'll be doing that again this week. I appreciate folks giving for uh, the dinner. We're trying to uh, be sure we can uh, have enough to feed the football team on Friday. And uh, this year a little bit different because normally we have uh, our ladies uh, volunteer and help prepare food and have a good home-cooked meal for Friday for the football team. But... Our ladies are leaving the country. They're headed to Tennessee for the ladies' retreat. So it's just a few guys trying to take care of that. So we decided it might be best to let somebody else do the cooking and we do the serving. And we appreciate folks who have given on behalf of that. Uh, I, I, I know that sometimes we maybe 
wonder why I do something like this, but we're impacting a lot of lives by having all of those football players and cheerleaders and coaches uh, come onto our campus, our property, see our church, get introduced to our ministries, find out a little bit about what's going on here. We always try to share the gospel with them. And uh, so I think it's something that will pay off as we continue to faithfully uh, be a servant to the people of our community. And uh, we want uh, your help with that. So any of you men that aren't doing anything about 3 o'clock on Friday, you can come and help us. And uh, we'll, we'll put our aprons on and serve. And uh, then uh, uh, after the game is over, we'll have the bonfire. Uh, if you maybe didn't or haven't or wanted to and haven't had the opportunity to give a special offering for the food that we'll purchase on Friday, you can do that. Just drop it in the offering plate during the regular offering. Take the envelope, mark it football, and we'll be sure that it gets placed on that. And uh, that'll be a blessing. So you can do that. Uh, as we uh, as we receive our offerings if you have yet to turn in a faith promise card we'll be asking for those again this coming Sunday and uh, maybe someone has been away or not in services and haven't been able to do that uh, you can do that again uh, this coming uh, Sunday and then we'll kind of take what we have and see where we are but we hope you'll be praying about that as well but uh, we're looking to the Lord just to answer prayer. We know there's several names on our list here, folks, we're praying for. Uh, I was blessed. I got the good report Sunday morning where we had several folks visiting and services Sunday morning, and that's a blessing to hear that. Uh, keep praying for the folks that are on here. Uh, keep remembering Brother Eric. Uh, he's uh, kind of going from one doctor's appointment to the other and uh, still not being able to find a good answer for the difficulties and challenges that he's having, but we hope you'll continue to pray for him. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I have a funeral service tomorrow. It's one of those situations where the family didn't have anyone, and I'll be doing a funeral tomorrow uh, for a uh, Miss McComas, uh, a lady that passed away. She's out from the aid area uh, and uh, uh, passed away here. I'll be uh, doing that funeral service tomorrow at 1 o'clock and uh, just looking for the opportunity to share the gospel with those people and to encourage uh, those that I can. So uh, that'll be tomorrow. We appreciate folks praying for that. It'll be a blessing. And uh, so I hope you'll remember that. My wife has, uh, has a cousin, a first cousin, who has uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, and that's continuing to progress on him. And he's just about my age or maybe a year older than I am. But I uh, hope you'll remember that prayer. That's uh, one of those things that uh, isn't going to get any better. It's only going to progressively get worse unless the Lord would just completely intervene and stop that or heal him. Uh, but uh, we hope you'll pray for him and remember him in prayer. And then just this week, her cousin, uh, a girl, a, a cousin, her first cousin, his, her husband found out he has leukemia. And his name is Alan Burcham. So I hope you'll play, pray for him. Just found out this week they're still evaluating what stage or what type that it is so that they can try to uh, take the appropriate lines of treatment here. But again, he's about a year older than I am or something like that. So, uh, so pray for him. His name again was Alan Burcham. And uh, we're just looking to the Lord there. Uh, anybody else have something you'd like to put on our prayer list tonight? Okay. Okay. Uh, Andrea's sister, Hannah, not feeling good. I want you to pray for her. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, pray for the ladies going to the ladies retreat we have a good group here in fact that's where some of our folks are tonight yeah they've uh, skipped town and they're already headed to the Smokies uh, to get in down there early for the retreat but uh, we do have a good group and uh, we'll, uh, there'll be a great group of ladies all together there so just pray for the retreat that the Lord will just speak to their hearts and encourage them and and uh, just meet needs in their lives. Anybody else have something you'd like to place on there tonight? 
I uh, had the opportunity this come this past Sunday to uh, go back to the church I pastored in uh, Tennessee and do their homecoming service. They asked me to come and go back and do a homecoming down at Fellowship Baptist Church in Newport, Tennessee. And so uh, we just felt led that we should go and encourage them. And uh, we were blessed. It was a good day, had a good service, and good to see folks there. And uh, uh, we were just uh, excited to be able to be there with those folks. Some of some fine uh, families and men in that church, and so we had the opportunity to fellowship with them again, and it was a blessing. Uh, one of the things that encouraged me the most was uh, I, uh, I got to see uh, uh, continuing proof of how profitable the bus ministry is. And uh, one of the things we did while we were there is we started a bus ministry. We one time ran two vans and two buses and brought in boys and girls and men and women from around the community and there's a blessing. I, I, as I came into town on Saturday evening, we came in to the main intersection in Newport. And there on the street corner was one of my bus kids, young man now in his 20s. And uh, we found him in a trailer park, got him to come to church to the youth group, and then got him into church. And then he got saved. And then the Lord called him to preach. He was standing on the street corner with a big verse on a board preaching to everybody that stopped at the stoplight and still going to church, old Jeremy, still serving God. And uh, his mother doesn't know the Lord and uh, just not a good home situation, everything against him, but the Lord was for him and rescued him. He's still serving the Lord. And it's just exciting to see that. And then in church that morning, there were a couple girls there. There they were sitting in church. Uh, young ladies now, they were just little big-eyed girls, picked them up on the buses and brought them to church. And there they were now as young women and uh, serving the Lord, going to church. And so that's encouraging. I'm so thankful for that as a blessing. And uh, so it was a good day. But uh, while I was there, I met a man that has started attending that church who, uh, who has a daughter who just graduated from Marshall University. And uh, so uh, he gave me her phone number and said, you know, we used to go to church, but she's gotten away from the Lord. And so I called her just a little while ago and just told her who I was and that her dad was praying and concerned about her. And I was, too, and invited her to the church. So hopefully we can see her come and, and, uh, and uh, be able to minister to her. So uh, her name is Casey Hall. Hope you pray for her. Casey Hall. But uh, maybe somebody else has something you'd like to put on there. Anyone tonight? Well, we're going to ask our men to come. We're going to receive our evening tithes and offerings, uh, our faith promise offerings. So uh, you uh, uh, can do that right now as we worship the Lord. Again, if you have maybe a special offering for the football dinner, you just mark it that way, and we'll be sure we get it. But these men will pray about our offering, and, and we'll pray about these things that we've discussed tonight, our prayer list. And, of course, we encourage you to pray uh, every day throughout the week. Wednesday to Wednesday about these things so our men will pray and we'll receive our offering tonight.
Amen. Well, homecoming is coming up on uh, Sunday, October the 13th, and we uh, had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Carter today on the phone, and he's excited and ready to come. Looking forward to the meetings, and we're doing something a little different this year. We're going to have a breakfast on uh, Saturday, October the 12th at 9 a.m., and we're trying to invite the whole church. I hope everybody who would plan on coming to church on Sunday will come out on Saturday as well, and we're just going to have a big carry-in breakfast and uh, have breakfast with Dr. Carter, and then we're going to allow him the opportunity just to share many of his experiences of everyday life and just sharing Christ, sharing the gospel. Uh, I've not ever been around a man or been with a man that that comes uh, more, uh, uh, I'm going to say natural because it's not natural, but he allows the Holy Spirit to use him in such a uh, consistent daily way of sharing his faith, even if it's just passing out a gospel track. He's conscious of that, you know. Uh, I'm sometimes ashamed that I'm out in public and I, I think, you know, I need to give that person a track and I reach in my pocket or my coat and I've forgotten to refill my pocket. I hate that when that happens. And, uh, but he is one of these men who are always looking for opportunities wherever he is. And uh, I want you to hear some of those experiences. And he wants to encourage us all uh, to live every day uh, conscious that people need to hear the gospel. People need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to just try to make that a great morning. We'll have some special material to give out that morning to people who only come to the breakfast. And he's going to have some things. Uh, we're wanting to be sure we have adequate preparation for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass around a sheet between now and then and just get you to sign up, uh, say, yeah, Lord willing, I'm being there. I'm not asking you to commit to doing anything. I just want to know how many approximately are planning on trying to attend. And that way uh, we can make the preparations we need to make as far as setting up the ministry center and materials and different things. Uh, we need to know that. Now, I understand things come up, things happen where you're not maybe able to follow through on that commitment, but uh, we hope that you'll be able to. I hope you're planning on it. You know, uh, the, we'll, never, we'll never follow through on anything unless we plan on doing it. We have to plan on doing it, and then we can make it happen, but uh, we have to make that plan. So I'm going to just pass this around. We will for several services, and I uh, hope you'll just go ahead and sign up and say, Lord willing, I'll be there. And it's for everybody. We want everybody there. Uh, moms, dads, uh, everybody to come to this. Uh, our church, it's for our church. And so I hope you'll just jot your name down and sign it up. Start that around, but uh, that'll be a great day. Then on Sunday, we'll have Sunday morning service, Sunday evening service, have a good meal, and uh, let Dr. Carter preach. And I hope you'll be working toward inviting people to homecoming. Every time Dr. Carter's been here, we've had people trust Christ to get saved. And so I hope that you'll be working to get people in church on that day, inviting people to come, and uh, it'll be a tremendous day, I'm sure. Uh, then uh, October is Roundup Month. We call it Roundup Month. We're trying to encourage families back into church, three services a week, uh, back into Sunday school, kids back in youth ministries and different things and it's just a time to get settled back in our place as we look toward finishing out the remaining part of the year uh, back into serving the Lord living for the Lord and uh, so we're going to do some special things throughout the entire month one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to begin Sunday preaching uh, s several messages on the the Lord is coming again the Lord is coming preaching again on the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and then on the on the last Sunday of the month, we're going to have a special day, and uh, you've seen some of the uh, some of the announcements of it. And we've got some little handbills, some little posters you can take with you on that table, and as you leave this table, and it says "Wanted to attend final final roundup Sunday," and instead of having a picture of a criminal, it just has the word "you." So wanted you to attend, and that morning we'll be preaching on the. Uh, some Bible prophecy. Uh, I believe the Lord's going to have us preach on uh, what you can expect if you miss the rapture. What you could expect if you miss the rapture. I hope you'll let people know about that and invite them to come and encourage them to be here. And then after church that night, I'd like to do something special. It's going to be the last Sunday of the month, and uh, it's our last roundup 
month service. Uh, I like to just have an old-fashioned pie social after the church service. That means just bring your best pie you got to church that night, and we'll just eat them after church is over. And uh, I like, uh, I never met any pie I didn't like, I don't think. I like some better than others, but I like them all. I like rhubarb pie. Really good. I, I, I really like it. And chocolate pie and lemon pie. And uh, I like fruit pies, and I like pies with cream filling. I like all kind of pie. So we're going to just have a pie social and coffee. Can't beat that after having a great day, just coming to hear God's word and uh, fellowship and invite some people to come out and be here. You know, it's amazing if you get out and drive around, and we drove home Sunday evening. Uh, we got back home here Sunday evening about 10 minutes before your service let out Sunday night, so we didn't come in and interrupt the service. But uh, it was amazing to me as I drove through Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky how many churches do not have service on Sunday night? Lights are off, not a car on the parking lot. I mean all flavors. Methodists, Presbyterians, Free Will Baptists, Baptists, all kinds just don't have church on Sunday night. And uh, uh, the great Dr. Lee Robertson said it takes three services a week to thrive in your Christian life. And I believe that. I need it. I need three good services a week to keep me between the ditches and on the right road for the Lord. I'm talking about myself, and I think we all need that. Sunday nights are a good opportunity for you to invite people to church because so many churches don't have Sunday night church and invite them to come. You say, well, yeah, I know they go to so-and-so church on Sunday morning. Good chance is they don't go anywhere on Sunday night and invite them to come. This would be a great opportunity to do that. I hope you'll take those and just pass them around. We've got uh, some flyers or some posters up at public places all across the community about our homecoming and about Dr. Carter going to be with us, help spread the word. We're going to try to do some things in the paper. We need to put something in the Thursday free announcements, and then get an, we'll get an ad in the paper, try to let some folks know that Dr. Carter will be with us. Our men's fellowship be Saturday, October the 19th this month at 830 and our ladies, if you're leaving on the ladies' retreat and you're going with our group, they'll leave around 9 a.m. on Friday morning. And uh, they'll load up and go and uh, be down there in uh, time to get registered and settled in and have dinner and then your first services and sessions. Uh, I believe uh, we were down there this weekend. They're going to have the whole lodge completely remodeled, every floor, I think, uh, top to bottom, new carpeting paint everything brand new so it was nice before it's going to be even nicer now and so you'll be the first group in there since that and uh, that'll be a tremendous blessing so we are thankful for what the lord is doing and the opportunities we have hope you'll pray for the many folks we have visiting right now the lord's working in their hearts and lives they're coming into church and and uh, hearing god's word and we're just trusting and praying the lord will work in their hearts and in their lives it is good to be here tonight. Appreciate folks coming out and uh, being here. Uh, on Wednesday nights, we always uh, like to give folks an opportunity maybe just to share a word of testimony, maybe a scripture verse that you read in your devotions this week, or uh, maybe an answer to prayer, just a praise item that you'd like to, like to give, or just an encouragement uh, to the other folks that are in church. That's what Wednesday evenings are so good for because they're a time of encouragement and uh, can help strengthen us to get us through uh, the remaining part of the week and until Sunday. But maybe somebody has something you'd like to share. Anybody tonight do that? If you want to take your Bibles, and uh, you can go ahead and find Ecclesiastes chapter 11. We're all the way through this book until the 11th chapter. We only have chapters 11 and 12. And uh, then we'll have this uh, study preached all the way through the book. And uh, we're almost there. But I hope you'll turn to chapter 11. I want us to look uh, here into chapter 11. And we're going to read uh, a few verses from here. We already have uh, looked at least into one portion of it. But uh, we're going to look a little bit farther tonight. So I hope that you'll uh, turn there with us and, and have it ready. If you uh, have
had a title tonight or you wanted to put a title for this message, it would be Dealing with Dark Days. Dealing with Dark Days. And uh, we looked at the earlier portion of chapter 11, and we know that there always are going to be clouds in our life. Clouds. We can't regard them. If we live under the clouds, we're never going to see anything accomplished for the Lord. We can't regard the clouds. So I want you to take that a step farther. and Let's think about the reality that there are going to be dark days. And uh, let's begin to look in verse number 7. And we're going to read, uh, we're going to read down through uh, a few of uh, these verses of Scripture. Uh, chapter 11, verse number 7 of the book of Ecclesiastes. The Bible says, Truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and the, in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth our vanity. And we'll stop right there. That'll finish out chapter 11. But I want you to look at that phrase. You see it right in your Bible in verse number 8. Days of darkness. The days of darkness. Dealing with the days of darkness. Our joy and fulfillment in life are in the Lord. And uh, you've heard preachers preach and Sunday school teachers teach that there's a difference in happiness and joy. Happiness is normally an emotional state that is a result of certain external circumstances and stimuli, things that make us happy. But joy is an inward thing, and it isn't necessarily an emotional thing, though there is emotion attached with joy. Joy is based on unchanging, unshakable, unmovable truths and facts. And from that, we can have joy. Fulfillment has to do with purpose. And those things are only going to be found in the Lord, in our relationship with Him. Uh, if you held your place right there in Ecclesiastes 11, and I've referred to the verse many times, maybe you forgot where it was and you like to mark it, Ecclesiastes 2 verse 17, Solomon makes that statement that's nearly unbelievable. He says, therefore I hated life. Therefore I hated life. How could it be? Because when we looked at the first two chapters, and when you go back in your Bible into God's Word, and you do some research on this man, and get back in uh, to God's Word where it lists the kings and the chronicles of the kings, you're going to find out that this was a man that had the world by the tail, so to speak. His accomplishments were, were innumerable. They were unsurpassed by any human being alive on planet Earth, in the lifetime of Solomon. Here, here's a man who, 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 who just from the things that he, that he accomplished, you would think his life would be fulfilled, that he would have felt like it really had made a difference that he lived. And yet he makes this statement, therefore I hated life. Here's a man that had money. Money wasn't a problem for him. God's word records <clears throat> the wealth of Solomon. Sheba, the queen of Sheba, came to see it all and said it's only half been told everything he has. God's word said that silver were like gravels under your feet in the kingdom of Solomon. The Bible talks about the shiploads of things that came into Solomon from around the world, gifts from those uh, other kingdoms of the world, and how he prospered uh, financially and had no want of anything. Uh, he had money that was beyond imagination. And yet he said, I hated life. You would have thought it wasn't from a lack of companionship. 
Dr. Shumpert got himself in trouble, didn't he, talking about that. He, he talked about the 700 wives of Solomon and the 300 concubines that Solomon could have had with him at any moment and uh, uh, how he had them all and yet even one can be a, a troublesome. <laughs> and I forget just how he said it, but he got himself in trouble. But Solomon had no, no lack of companionship. And there's some people in life today who say, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, nobody is around me, nobody wants to be with me, I don't have any friends. Solomon couldn't say that. And yet he said, I hated life. I hated life. Why? Well, I think, I think what we realize when we study this is he wasn't realizing God's plan for his life. He, he had no regard for it. And because of that, because, because he was living like there was no God, there was no joy in living. There was no sense of fulfillment or purpose of life and living in his life because he was disregarding God. I hated life. Our joy in life will be based on our relationship with the Lord. And I'm glad to say that our joy in life and our fulfillment in life, it, it, isn't, it isn't relevant. It isn't, it isn't based upon our accomplishments in the world, the money or wealth, finances or things we have or other people. It's not relevant or based upon any of those things. It's based upon our relationship with the Lord. That's where joy comes from. That's where a sense of it means something that I've lived comes from in this life. It comes from our relationship with God uh, and our relationship and personal walk with the Lord. Joy is not dependent upon any of those other things. And in our relationship with the Lord, that joyful relationship that's possible, the, the, the wise man chooses to, 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 to see and embrace and experience God's plan for their life. And when they do that, then that's where the joy comes from. That's where it comes from. We're coming here now to the end of Ecclesiastes. only have another chapter to look into. And God is giving us some more things here to help us enjoy life, to find joy in life, not to live an empty life. And I want you to look look at one of these things in verse number 7 he says there in Ecclesiastes 8 verse 7 truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun that's a true statement isn't it it's beautiful sunshiny days this time of the year it's wonderful isn't it beautiful it's a beautiful thing and I think what he's trying to help us to begin to understand that every day of life is an opportunity to live and let our life matter for the Lord. And as, and as we think about that, then he shows us some truths here that helps that become reality. Let me give you some of them here quickly. Number one, life will have its dark days. Life will have its dark days. You look in the next verse, it says, But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness. For they shall be many. Let him remember the days of darkness. For they shall be many. Thank God for the sunny days of life. But there will be many dark days. There will be many dark days. Life will have its dark days. But just because the day is dark. Does not mean that your life is bad. Or that you, that, that you have to endure that with no joy. Now, that's, that's the lesson that we need to learn. We need to understand that just because we're going to have some dark days doesn't mean God's being bad to us or that our life is bad. And just because we go through some dark days in life doesn't mean that we can enjoy life and the opportunity to live for God. Many times we wear our dark days on our sleeves, so to speak. And uh, it's all we can talk about, it seems like, how bad we have it. We all know those people that you just learn not to ask them how you're doing. <laughs> because by the time you're done, you're depressed and discouraged. And I mean, just, you know, you've been standing under their black cloud. 
And sometimes you just don't ask that question. And so many times we, we wear that darkness like a garment around us. Uh, and, and, and it's all that, it's, it's all that, that people... That's all that people connect with our lives. And if we profess to know Christ as our Savior, people need to know there's much, much more than just the dark days, even though we go through them. You know, we forget sometimes uh, all that the Lord has done for us and all that He will do for us in the future and the, and the reality, the, the foundation of the promises and the truths of God that are unshaking and unchanging and immovable. And uh, regardless of our circumstances and situations in life, there are things that will be true of us a million years from now that can never change. Sometimes we forget about those things when the dark days come. You hold your place there, but if you turn back to the book of James, James tonight, and look in chapter 1, uh, God's word here, James chapter 1, verse number 2, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. A preacher one time was, uh, was asked by a young man, said, you know, I'm an impatient man, I, I need some patience. I need, to, I need patience. How can I have patience? And the pastor said, just get married. And the man said, well, what do you mean, pastor? He said, well, haven't you read that in James chapter 1 and verse 4 where it says, let patience have her perfect work? <laughs> God personifies that with a feminine pronoun. I don't know if there's any relevance to that or not, but... But uh, that's, what, uh, that's what the one pastor said. But you'll notice here, God is taking us to this. And I want you to notice uh, what he's talking about. He says, let patience have her perfect work. The word perfect. In the Bible, we understand this word perfect means, uh, means to mature. It means a sense of spiritual maturity. It means to be a grown-up child of God. This idea of perfect and we understand that it's not speaking about sinlessness as far as that goes in this world. None of us are perfect in this world. But God is at work perfecting us, growing us, maturing us into, into men and women of God. And that's what this word means. And the Bible said that one of the things God uses to grow us up and mature us and help us reach our fullest potential to glorify God in this world is the dark days that try our patience. And God has a purpose in it, doesn't He? He has a purpose in these things. God does a work through the dark days that try our patience. We have a life, we have a relationship with the Lord, and into that life the Lord will bring sometimes dark days. Those days are not sent by God to destroy us, they are sent to grow us. They are sent to mature us. They are sent to help us to draw nearer to Him. And in our nearness to the Lord, we become more like Him. So that we go through those dark days and we are more light in a dark world than we ever have been before. The darkness, the dark days, the days that try our patience. You know, it's our reaction to God's work in the dark days that determines whether or not we're growing or not. How we respond to the dark days. How we respond to the things that, that, that try our patience as God works in our life. That, that shows us whether we're passing the test or failing. Whether we're growing or whether we're staying the same spiritual maturity level. And God wants us to grow. And sometimes the only way He can do it is through the dark days that try our patience. Uh, sometimes during the darkness, uh, we're tempted to, to say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, think the wrong thing, react the wrong way. God wants us to look to Him. Verse 5, uh, uh, that uh, passage, it says in the fourth verse, But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If you'll see, it's through this dark, trying times of patience that we're equipped and made whole to be the person God saved us to be. We'll never be all we ought to be unless we can learn to live in the dark days 
with joy in our heart and life. He goes on in verse 5 to say, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. I think he takes those two verses of Scripture and puts them side by side because it's sometimes in the dark days that, and the events that test our patience in life that we need to cry out to God for wisdom about how we're to grow through those dark days. How we're to respond. How we're to act and react to those times. Ask the Lord to help us wisely respond and to help us to see God's hand at work in the dark days. You know, sometimes I think we look up the bless the, the sunshine and the beautiful clear day and we say, God, how you blessed us today with this beautiful day. But you know, sometimes it's in the dark days that God's blessing us too. We just don't know that. But God wants us to grow to where we understand that. The dark days we understand and know that life will have its dark days. And God has a purpose in them, and God wants to help us to grow by them. Let's, let's look at another. We have time to mention another. I want you to look at a second thing. Life will be brought into judgment. Life will be brought into judgment. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, the Bible goes on to say in the ninth verse, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. God will bring thee into judgment. We will answer to God for every day that we've lived, that we've known the Lord as our Savior. Every day. We'll give an account. Life is kind of like uh, a cafeteria line. If you want to say it that way, you remember a cafeteria. Uh, some of you remember in Huntington there was a good cafeteria. My, my uh, grandmother, mom's mother, used to like to go to Huntington and shop. She had a sister who lived up there, and that was a big city. You know, you didn't have malls, so if you wanted to go to unique places, you had to go to Huntington. And there was a cafeteria downtown called Bailey's. Any of you remember Bailey's Cafeteria? Whew, man, they had some of the best uh, mashed potatoes and chicken and dumplings and things over there that any boy could ever remember. And uh, I enjoyed it. You know, you go in there and you just take your tray and go down the line and you pick out what you want. And by the time you're done, you've created the plate for yourself to enjoy. And, you know, in some sense, life is a little bit like that. As we go through life each day, we can get all of the joy and fulfillment in life that we want. But we have to choose to. We have to choose to. And, uh, you know, uh, the problem is we also can pass up a lot of things. But the thing about it is, is by the time... We get to the end of that cafeteria line. You know who's waiting at the end? The cashier. And you're going to have to settle up. And there's no way to get through it without settling up. And our life is that way. We live life and there's going to be days of sunshine. There's going to be days that are dark days. But we choose what we do with the sunshine and with the darkness. And God blesses in the sunshine, but God blesses in the darkness. And God will grow and perfect us and, and establish us and use us. And we can know joy and fulfillment if we choose to. But regardless, in the end, someday God's going to bring us into judgment. God will bring us into judgment. You know, you ought to have these verses marked in your Bible. Romans, Romans chapter 14. As I stated, some some of the services here in the month of October as we think about roundup month we're going to be preaching on Bible prophecy on the Lord's return uh, and here's a passage of scripture you can share Romans chapter 14 verse number 7 the Bible says for none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself for whether we live we live unto the Lord and whether we die we die unto the Lord whether we live therefore or die we are the Lord's for to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before 
judgment seat of Christ. And we know biblically, scripturally, doctrinally, this judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, is for the saved. And at the judgment seat of Christ, it is not in question whether we are lost or saved. We will be saved and are saved or we will not be there. It's not what's in question. What's in question is life. What we did with it with the sunny days and the dark days. What we did with the opportunity of life that God has given us. And some, some people, some people seem to think it's their task to, in life to judge others. They just, they just seem like they're the self-appointed judges, you know, and they want to look at everyone else's life. But we must never forget that every man will give an account for his own life. And what we choose to do with life, the sunny days and the dark days, that will, be, that will be answered at the judgment seat of Christ. Life will have dark days. Life will be brought into judgment. And there's one last thought. Life must move forward. We must move forward. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 10 Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart. Put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. God doesn't want us to live like children all our lives. Pouting over not getting our way. Getting mad at some other child who does something we do not like. Some people who are saved people have never grown through the dark days of life. And so... They respond like those children do in a vain way. Mad at God, mad at life, circumstances, situations, incidents from the past, things that are circumstances of the present, and they can't get on and they can't go beyond it. And they never grow. But God said we must move forward. Life must move forward. Remove sorrow. Childhood and youth are not the way that God intends life to continually always be. Enjoy it. Enjoy the childhood. Enjoy the youth. But grow up and move on in God, in your life with the Lord. Life moves on. It's natural to move on, to grow, mature. You know, many of God's people are stopped. They're stopped because they can't get over something. Some dark day dropped something into their life years ago, and they've never moved beyond that. Some, some of God's people, they, uh, they, they, they've, they've gotten held up moving forward in life by some incident or some present circumstance. They feel like they can't move forward until some present circumstance changes. You know what? There's some present circumstances of life that God isn't going to take that away, but He'll give us the grace to grow through them and learn and mature and and become more Christ-like and even note the joy of our life in relationship with God. If we'll allow Him to do that. You can look over in Philippians chapter 3 sometime. In Philippians 3 and read some of the things that uh, Paul had to deal with in his life and his relationship with God. In Philippians 3 verse number 13. You can turn down there familiar passage of scripture. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. I'm going to move on. I can tell you what. You ever get in the ministry, you're going to have to learn how to move on. You're going to have to learn how to get over what happened in the past and move forward. But we have to do that in our own lives also. In our own lives, move forward, move forward. We pe People say, well, I just can't. I've had people tell me that. I can't forget that. I can't forgive that. I can't get beyond that. Well, you know what? That's a choice they're making. Because in the Lord... I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can if I will, because God can. God is able, and God will. We can because Christ is in our lives. Christ moved forward. Christ moved on. And he lived a life that pleased God. And you say, preacher, I'm just not enjoying my life. 
It's not enjoying it. Well, I, I'd encourage you to commit to memory and put into practice Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Seeing therefore, brethren, that we are encompassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. You want to look for the joy? <laughs> then look past the end of your nose <laughs> and look at eternity and think of what he's done for you. And this veil of sorrow, this dark day of life, it's only for a moment. It's all going to be wiped away as we step into eternity. And we're going to be able to live with Him forever and forever and forever. And everything we've had to go through will have been nothing in comparison. What He did for us, nothing. Nothing that we can do or endure on His behalf should ever keep us from moving forward. Because He continued to move forward for us. The dark days. Dealing with the dark days. We have them. But we have to choose what we want to do with them. And God has a plan for them. And the end, His will is to perfect us. And He will through those dark days. We must allow Him to do so. Let's pray together. On Wednesday nights, we always want to invite anyone who's here in the services. Maybe you came to church tonight, but you never have come to Christ to, to be your Savior. We want to invite you to stay after the service. We'd love to speak to you about these things. But let's look to the Lord tonight as we finish out our services. Father, thank you for the Word of God. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit. And God, may the Spirit of God and your Spirit, Lord, may you take your Word and quicken these truths, make them alive. May they grasp our heart. May they become practical through obedience and faith. And Lord, we pray you'd grow us and mature us. Lord, we know tonight there may be some people in this service who are facing dark days of all types of, uh, of things that, God, they're dealing with in life. Let them look to you. Help them to see, Father, your love for them, what you were willing to do for them on the cross, that, God, it's not your will to destroy them, but, God, you want to help them in the dark days to look to you, to draw closer to you, to grow their faith and mature them so that, God, they can be used uh, by you to glorify yourself and to point others to Christ. We just pray now you'd encourage. And Lord, if there's somebody here dealing today with a need, uh, God, we pray they'll bring it to you. A decision needs to be made. May they seek your wisdom. Lord, we just commit these things to your hands. Thank you now for meeting with us. We pray you'd bless. Help us to be about your work now over these next few days. And now on the Lord's day, Father, may we uh, work to have brought someone to Sunday school or church. We just look to you now. Thank you for the time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
we hurt, we're hurting stiff neck, bad back, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so that'll be tremendous. And so thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate that. God bless you. Amen. And isn't it a blessing to see all these teenagers yeah. right here? Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. I had to lie to her to get her here. <laughs> I wonder. She came in and messed up my preaching. <laughs> came in here, busted in the door open, rushed in.